Welcome back. Well, Lucien Bouchard is not the only person making news. This Sunday, Kevin Barassa and Jor Varnell are getting married in Toronto. Uh, what's going to make their wedding special is the two men are getting married to each other. And what makes it even more special is they say they found a loophole in the law that allows them to marry legally. Ontario's government doesn't agree with them, but Kevin and Joe join me now in studio. Kevin, let me ask you first, you both got married in a church before, but what's different this time? Well, the first time was really a holy union. It wasn't a marriage in the sense that we couldn't actually call it such because there was no hope for a license, let alone registration. Mm -hmm. It was a gathering of our friends, our family, our colleagues. It was very special to us. But even at that time, at, on the back of our invitation, we had a, a photograph of the Justice Minister, her email address, um, fax, all, all contact information. And we asked our, our family and friends to write to the minister in favor of marriage. Mm -hmm. So two years ago, that was on our agenda. And of course, the, the uh, Reverend Hawks was officiating at that uh, Holy Union, and he was well aware of our long-time interest in uh, being allowed to be married. And so, when this opportunity arose, uh, he approached us. And Joe, tell me what the opportunity was. What's going to be different this time around, or what was different leading up to this marriage? What, what's different this time around is that uh, under Ontario law, you can have a marriage license issued by your church through the reading of bans, which is an announcement in church on three consecutive Sundays of your intention to marry. If no lawful objection is shown, and lawful causes things like underage, already married, if no one can show lawful cause why two persons, the statute says that in Ontario, cannot be married, then the church and not the government issues the marriage license. And from the moment the church does that, the couple is legally married. And so Kevin and I and our friends Anne and Elaine are going to be the first two uh, gay and lesbian married couples in the world. Now, bans used to be read all the time, but it became a tradition that sort of passed away. I hadn't even heard of it until you guys brought it back. Where did you get the idea? Who thought it up? Well, this uh, wasn't our idea. <clears throat> Pardon me. It was something that uh, came to the church through legal counsel. Uh, lawyers associated with the church uh, mm -hmm. became aware of the issue and uh, raised it with, with uh, Reverend Hawks, and then we came forward. Now, the government, of course, the Ontario government says you can do whatever you want. They still aren't going to accept that license. They still aren't going to register you. Uh, the, the, they've said that. Um, we, we remain hopeful, though, that the government will show true leadership in this case and catch up to, you know, corporations have had same-sex benefits for years now. We're hoping the government will show some true leadership and accept this. And really, the government's one job is to register this marriage, not to rule on its validity. The registration of a marriage license is no different than the registration of a birth. If your birth isn't registered, it doesn't change the legal standing of the child. We are legally married when the church issues the license on Sunday, whether the registrar or registers it or not is another matter. Canada has a really long history of uh, a reputation, a strong reputation for human rights, a strong reputation for diversity and inclusion. We're really hoping that Premier Harris will stay with that tradition and reconsider his, his position and recognize that the community is with us, uh, corporations have long been with us. But the Canadian government is not with you. I mean, not just the Canadian Alliance Party, but the Liberals have made it very clear they don't want to touch this particular hot potato. Uh, the Ontario government certainly is not in favor of this. So what do you do once Bob Runciman stands at the door and says, no, I'm sorry, you're not married in our eyes? Well, we're, we're hoping that, you know, Mr. Runciman will reconsider, but if he doesn't, you know, this is a little different than most of the cases that are currently before the courts. There are several challenges in BC and in Quebec on the grounds of personal freedom, but this isn't about personal freedom, this is about religious freedom. Mm -hmm. If the government refuses to register this marriage, they're impinging upon the right of our church and our congregation to practice religion because of the religious views of other groups. And we feel that would be blatant discrimination on the grounds of religion and, you know, the, at that point the church would take Mr. Runciman to court and say, you have no reason for refusing to register these marriages except for the religious views of some groups and that's an impingement on the freedom of religion. You know, I was thinking, we, we, we accept as a society, legally, marriages of people who are basically forced together by the parents who never met each other once before. You guys have spent a lot of time choosing, as have your, 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 your friends in the movement. How important is the particular political act of this marriage to you? I mean, some people would say, well, you've got more or less what you want. You're lucky you found each other to love. Why not leave it at that? There are a lot of people across Canada that don't have the support network that we have, that don't, aren't in our situation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, for example, common law status is not enough. Mm -hmm. um, that's, a, that's second class status. If, okay. if, Joe, if I knew Joe only after six months, like any straight couple, and wanted to get married, he'd be kicked off the floor if I was ill in a hospital. He'd have no rights, no standings. And so we're looking for full and equal status. And we've got to leave it at that, but good luck to you on Sunday. Best of Thank luck you. to both of you. Thank, Thank you. you. I was at a Toronto church tomorrow. 
The ceremonies will take place following an old Anglican tradition called the publication of bans. But it's unclear if the Ontario government will in fact recognize the marriages as legal. Um, we're fully confident that if the governments drag us through the courts on this, that the Supreme Court will rule in our favor. Couples in other provinces, including British Columbia, are also challenging federal law to recognize same-sex marriages. Not recognize or register the same-sex marriages. Walking down the aisle to the processional music trumpet tune in D, two same-sex couples are rehearsing their upcoming wedding at Toronto's Metropolitan Community Church. 42-year-old Kevin Barassa will marry his partner of three and a half years, Joe Varnell. This, this is really the continuation of a long and long human rights struggle. You know, we couldn't be standing here if people before us hadn't done a lot of work to get us to this stage. Anne Vauture and Elaine Vauture will tie the knot at the same time. We're married whether this gets registered or not. As far as the courts are concerned, marriage is a legal union between a man and a woman. But that's not stopping Reverend Brent Hawks from going through with the same-sex marriages. He's using a loophole in provincial law to get around obtaining a license from the Registrar General. The uh, law uh, gives me the authority uh, under the publication of bans to determine if there's any lawful cause why the couple shouldn't be married. And I've considered the objections raised and there is no lawful cause under law. On Tuesday at noon, I will take the documents and put them in the mail as required. Um, then they will go to the Registrar General who will have a decision to make. The groundbreaking wedding takes place tomorrow at 2 p.m. at the Metropolitan the Community Oxford Church. Carly Nation, uh, CFTO uh, News. Jeffrey ...married in Canada. They're planning to wed today using a loophole in Ontario's Marriage Act. Couples held their rehearsal yesterday. They'll be wed in a double ceremony by Reverend Brent Hawks. The uh, law uh, gives me the authority uh, under the publication of bans to determine if there's any lawful cause why the couple shouldn't be married. And I've considered the objections raised and there is no lawful cause under law. On Tuesday at noon, I will take the documents and put them in the mail as required. Um, then they will go to the Registrar General who will have a decision to make. Ontario's Registrar General is not expected to sign the marriage license. Reverend Hawks is prepared to take the case to court if that happens. <laughs>